Concept maps are just a great way to organize information to make sure that you're understanding the relationships between the topics. And so I'm going to make a concept map for classifying matter. And I'd like you to make this concept map along with me. So if you need to pause the video to get a scrap sheet of paper and a pencil, go ahead and do that. When we classify matter, there are two general categories that all matter can fall into. Something is either a pure substance or it's a mixture. So matter will fit into one of those two categories. If I start over here on the pure substance side, pure substances are either referred to as an element or a compound. Now, because elements and compounds are both considered pure substances, we can say that they are made of one thing. So, an element and a compound, because they're pure substances, are made out of one thing, because that's the definition right here of a pure substance. Now it turns out an element is the simplest kind of pure substance you can have. It doesn't get any simpler than this. Elements you'll find on the periodic table. A compound, however, is a little more complex. It's two or more elements chemically combined. Now at first this definition seems like a complete contradiction to this down here, made of only one thing made of two or more things chemically combined, made of one thing. Seems like a contradiction. It is not a contradiction because when two or more things are chemically combined, they turn into one brand new substance. Now, if you are not a pure substance, if you are not made of just one thing, then you would be referred to as a mixture. Mixtures are two or more things that are not chemically combined. There's two categories for mixtures. There's homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures. Now homogeneous mixtures are when those two or more things that are put together look like one thing. They're not one thing. There's two or more things not chemically combined, but they're mixed together so well it looks like one thing. It looks the same. And that's what this prefix here means. This prefix means the same. So it's when two or more things are mixed together, but they look the same. There are two kinds of homogeneous mixtures. Something can be classified as a solution or a colloid. Now, a solution is a homogeneous mixture where, again, it looks like one thing, and this is, we refer to this when one thing is dissolved in another, like salt is dissolved in water. You can't see the salt anymore. It looks like just one thing. It looks like just water. A colloid also looks like one thing because it's a homogeneous mixture. And again, I said looks like one thing, not necessarily is one thing. Milk is a good example of a colloid. There's a lot of things in there, but it looks like one thing. Heterogeneous mixtures are sometimes called suspensions if something settles out over time. Now, heterogeneous mixtures are mixtures where those two or more things that are mixed together, you can tell them apart. You can tell there's more than just one thing in there. And that's what this prefix here means. Hetero means different. 
so you can see the different parts of the mixture. It's heterogeneous. And again, a suspension where one thing settles out would definitely look different. All heterogeneous mixtures are not necessarily suspensions. So you can just have a plain old heterogeneous mixture and not necessarily have it be a suspension where something settles over time. Now when we look at these three here, these three kinds of mixtures that we have at the bottom of our concept map, what determines which category something is in it is based on the size of the largest particles. So it turns out that a solution has the smallest size particles inside the mixture. A colloid has medium-sized particles, and a suspension has the largest-sized particles. Remember, suspensions settle out over time, and it's just because their particles are so large. So size of particles, small, medium, large. And so you should, be do you should have been doing that along with me. And now that you've done that, I would like you to take that like sheet of paper and turn it over, cover this up, and just try to recreate this again from memory. This is very visual, and this makes sure that you understand how the words are related to one another. And you want to be going through that thought process as you are filling, uh, making this concept map again.